Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's the all new GMC Hummer electric vehicle, or the Hummer EV. And while a base model starts at around $100,000, this one specifically being the three motor version, it starts at about $140,000, which is about the same as a Midwestern house, maybe a family starter house. And today I'm gonna talk about why this might just be the worst $140,000 vehicle that you can buy today while doing a walk around. We're gonna talk about the exterior styling characteristics and design language. And overall, I just want to know your thoughts as well, so comment those below. And if you appreciate anything that you see in this video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, let's get right into it. Starting with the front of this Hummer, it actually looks really bold and aggressive. The daytime running lights are up here, and it starts with an H on the periphery of it. So H for Hummer. And then if you miss that, it spells out Hummer. And then below that on each side, you have the projector headlights, which I'm assuming are really bright with the huge battery pack that this one has. But the color is called Neptune Blue Matte. And it's kind of interesting because it does look like a wrap because of the matte finish on it, but also is kind of sparkly. So it's kind of an, an interesting paint color and I'm sure it was pretty expensive, especially for how much square footage of paint they had to put on this. But otherwise, there's a lot of shiny black on this, something I wouldn't exactly expect for an off-roader. And then it almost has like the Viper cut, something that people do in the foreigners to make him a little bit more aggressive, have a little bit better front approach angle and be less likely to damage the bumper on the sides but you'll notice you have these huge shackles on each side. You have a front-facing camera, a whole bunch of safety sensors all around for, you know, if you're paying $140,000 for this, you expect there to be a lot of safety features. And then you have a big skid plate down below, and it looks like some radiator for battery cooling below that. The wheels and tires on this one honestly look really nice, really beefy. But first of all, you need to know that this is a factory option. This isn't the base wheel that you get. The base wheel is a 35 inch tall by 12 inch wide tire. It's more specifically a 305, 55, 22. This though is an 18 inch wheel. It's the $1,500 upgraded beadlock capable wheel, which actually looks really nice in person. And it's an 18 inch wheel. But overall, it's still a 35 inch wide tire. I should say it's a 305 by 70 because you got a whole lot of sidewall with the 70 by 18. So even a huge 18 inch wheel actually looks pretty small in this overall package. And you'll notice that it's an MT tire. So it's a mud train tire. And hiding behind it, you have a pretty beefy upper control arm. You have a huge airbag for the electronically controlled airbag suspension, which speaking of, the base ground clearance on this one is 10.2 inches. When you go into extract mode, you can lift this sucker up another six inches. So you're at 16 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty impressive. And then even at its lowest ride height, the front approach angle looks pretty mean. You could really climb some pretty good stuff, but you've got to be careful because with the 177 kilowatt hour battery pack under here, you don't want to puncture that on any rocks. I do think it was nice that GMC put these rock rails on the side and then they do have a step because this is a tall vehicle and you actually might need to step on it. Thankfully, the step component comes up and it sticks out far enough that you're less likely to get door dings because people are more likely to hit your your steps than your actual doors because this is not bulletproof like the Cybertruck has been shown to be. So you have rock sliders and you have steps and I think that's a pretty good combination. Otherwise, you have some more weird, shiny gloss black around the fenders and around the side and I don't know why that's the design language. This really feels like a pavement princess to me. It really doesn't seem like something that anyone seriously is gonna take off-roading, especially for $140,000. And just like the gas-powered Hummers from 10 to 20 years ago before Hummer was shut down in the recession as part of the deal that GM struck with the government, these have never been known for efficiency. Sure, it's rated for up to about 60 miles per gallon equivalent, but in practice, this is probably about the same as getting 20, maybe 25 MPG, and that's only if it doesn't waste a lot of energy in its electrical charging structure because you lose power while charging. And there's a few different ways you can do this. You can do a 440 volt fast charger. You could do a level two if you have that installed at your house and that might take about 10 hours to charge. Or if you plug this into a wall outlet, similarly to your cell phone, it's actually gonna take at least 55 hours to charge from a dead battery. Three days later. Which is quite a long time, especially when the range on this, although some of them are rated for up to about 330 miles, the realistic range for an EV is probably only about 75% of that. So you might be lucky to get about 250 miles. And that's if you're not in the extract mode. If you have it on its lowest suspension, you're not using the electronics excessively and you drive without accelerating, which this does zero to 60 in three seconds or three and a half seconds, depending on the testing. And if you discredit rollout and the surface and all those things, so it's fast. 
But if you're going to be driving it like that, you're not going to be getting even 250 miles with this. And because this is the SUV version of the Hummer EV and it's not the truck, which is slightly longer, you lose the covered storage and you get a slightly longer, again, not very useful truck bed because this really isn't much of a truck, not at least one that's meant for payload and for towing and practical purposes. But this one being the SUV, from tip to tail, it's basically 17 and a quarter feet long, which is actually a pretty decent number. It's not too long. It has a wheelbase of about 10 and a half feet. So again, pretty good angles, especially the front. The rear isn't as good, but kind of like a Jeep Wrangler, the front is amazing, probably 40 degrees or more. The back is probably in the upper 20s, I would assume. I'll overlay on the screen what the actual numbers are. And then it's about 7.16 feet wide. So it's really wide and it has the amber lights signifying that this is more than just a regular truck. This is almost like a commercial grade truck. And then it's about six and a half feet tall. So I'm just under six feet. And yeah, I'm looking up to look to the roof and I can't even quite see the freedom panels unless I put the camera up here. But you'll notice that you do have the three lights on the top. And then I'm assuming that on the side of the daytime running light, that's probably the fourth and fifth light on the side because they're wider than the top. I'm assuming that's the design language that this went with. It also has three wiper blades, similar to what my FJ Cruiser used to have, which does this feel like a twice as heavy version of the FJ Cruiser with three times more power than what mine had with the supercharger? Yeah, probably. Is it also maybe seven times the price? Yeah, it is. Anyways, if you actually are very interested in this or something like this, I don't mean to knock it that much. I just don't understand why a base model Hummer EV costs $100,000 and why one that has three motors, the freedom panels on the roof, and a few other options costs $140,000. That's insane. In probably two years, this will be worth $60,000 based off of what other EVs have done. Heck, the Tesla Model S Plaid, which I drove one of those when they were basically brand new for a video, that now has dropped about $40,000 from when it was brand new. And so a used one has dropped that much more to where a used one is now 60 grand, even though a brand new one two years ago was 140 grand. So I don't anticipate that this is going to keep its value any better than 60 grand in two years because vehicles are depreciating liability. They're not an appreciating asset. They depreciate. You lose a lot of money and I don't want you guys to overpay. So just be careful. Be cautious. Sure, this one looks really good. It has really wide fenders. It has really nice angles and lines and it does look big and bold. But this isn't the kind of vehicle you take off-road. This is the kind of vehicle you drive to the mall, that you drive to the Olive Garden, that you take on fancy dates and you drive around to business meetings and you pick people up and you think you feel like you're on the top of the world when you're driving something like this, but it's not a vehicle that's actually meant for off-roading. At least I don't think so. Sure, I'm sure you could take it. I'm sure they do decently well, but who in their right mind is gonna buy one of these to go thrash on the trails? At least that's not something that I understand. And if I'm wrong, please comment below and correct me. Let's wrap this up on a positive note. So I am happy that there is the interesting characteristics that this has. And it's not just the typical white to black or gray vehicle that's a cookie cutter, jelly bean shape that everything else is these days. So although I don't understand this, and that's coming from someone who used to drive trucks, who used to have a lifted supercharged body armored FJ Cruiser, I just don't understand this at this point. I love the three wiper blades. I like the amber lights, even though I think seven and a quarter feet wide is pretty excessive for something like this. It has an American flag on it because GMC is an American company, even though their Buick division, most of those are made in China and then they're shipped overseas. I wouldn't be surprised if the 3000 pound battery pack out of this one wasn't even, you know, mined in American, was probably also mined in other countries. It does look cool. I'm glad it exists, I guess but it's kind of interesting. I just don't know who's gonna buy these. And I understand why only 3,600 of them were sold for the final year of production for 2023, because 2022 hardly had any. 2024 models are still being sold and we'll see what we get for 2025. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, if you got anything out of it, please consider liking it. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. This is not my typical kind of review. I just saw this one and I wanted to stop for a few minutes and personally just selfishly check it out for myself. And I'm assuming because there's only a few thousand of these that actually exist, maybe a few of you guys are interested in checking it out and seeing anything up close that you caught from this video. But I'm no expert on this. I haven't driven one of these yet. I've driven a lot of other EVs and reviews, but not one of these yet. But it does look polarizing. It does look really interesting in person. So with that said, I wish you guys the best. Take care.